Welcome to this video on installing LAN Guardian on VMware Player or Workstation. My name is Darren Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netford. If you want to try out LAN Guardian on your own laptop, you can do so by following these steps. Now it allows you to create a, almost like a portable forensics tool. So first thing you need to do is go to the Netford website. There's a try it free or there's a download now option here. Just click on that. Um, select the ISO image here, just press download, fill in your details and save the ISO file somewhere on your laptop. Next thing you need to do is either use VMware Workstation, which is the paid version, or use VMware Player, which is free. Either one of them will work. I'm using VMware Workstation here. So what I need to do is go to File and New Virtual Machine. And again, it's very similar setup in VMware Player, both work just as well. Choose the custom setup, press next, VMware Workstation 10 is fine. Select the ISO, so you need to browse to where you've stored the ISO file. So just select it there like that. That's the ISO I just downloaded, go next. Select Linux as the work operating system and choose CentOS 64-bit, go next. Um, give it a name, I'm just gonna call it Langardian Local. Go next. CPU, just one is fine. Uh, memory, we would recommend, I've selected one gig here. I'm gonna select four gigs. Probably two gigs on a portable is probably ideal. Um, I do have 16 in this, so I'm gonna up it to four gigs. It's better performance. Um, just okay for the NAS here for the moment, for the network type, we will come back to this. The disk, just select the defaults. And 20 gigabytes is more than enough. Now, before you finish, you need to customize the hardware. Click on that, customize hardware. Click on add, select the network adapter, next, and finish. Now, if you wanna monitor traffic from a spam port using the laptop, what you need to do is change the setting here from NAT to bridged. And you may as well do it for both. If you use the bridge, you will need to sign LangGuardian and IP off your, off your physical network, um, but just get an IP and have both interface on bridge, press close, finish, and then power up the LangGuardian virtual machine. All in all, it takes uh, less than 10 minutes to get this LangGuardian up and running. So if you're having a network issue, um, it's an ideal solution because within minutes, you're gonna be looking at traffic on the network. Okay, so let's now continue the install. So first you just say yes to continue. Type one for the disk. There's only one disk on this, so just type in number one. You sure you want to continue? So you press yes. You've got two network cards, so number one for the management. Let's press enter. Give it an IP address. Uh, Subnet mask. Um, Gateway, which is fine, and DNS, which is Google, so I'll leave it on that, 8.8.8.8. And are you sure you want to install, press return. It's now installing the LangGuardian software to this virtual machine. This takes, um, usually takes less than a minute. So now asking me to restart, so press return, the virtual machine is going to reboot. Boot up process takes a couple of minutes. Uh, you see last message just going by. You're waiting for a prompt which um, tells you to log on to a browser. So you should see a message saying, please go to your browser, HTTP, 10, my case, 10, 1, 1, 200. So wait for that message to come up. Um, it's, it takes a couple of minutes the first time as LangArdian initializes and sets up its database. So um, don't reboot or press any buttons. Just wait for that message to come up. Okay, this is the prompt I was waiting for. So we now, um, if you're not familiar with uh, VMware Workstation Player, press Control Alt to get out the CLI, and then we go to our browser. So, to put in the IP address of ten that one one two hundred into the browser. Let's okay, this message confirm, and it starts off the next part of the wizard, which completes the install. So, let's press next. Just let work settings look fine. 
email, you can, I'm okay with that. You might want to set your own email address there. The system clock, I'm going to use NTP, but just make sure it's got the correct time. Got to set a GUI password now. Needs a minimum of eight characters, or sorry, seven characters. Now, if you have Active Directory on your network, um, you can type in the IP address of the domain controller here and then username and password. So that allows you to get usernames and reports. So I'm just going to leave it um, off at the moment, so just don't type anything in. And we come to sensor status here, so it looks to be up. Now, at the moment, I'm only monitoring local traffic on my laptop. So anything I do on my laptop, access a file or go to a website, it will record that. If you want to get more visibility in your network, plug your laptop into a switch and set up a spam port and use the your laptop connection as the destination. Um, you might want to plug into your core switch. We have further videos on this, um, which like how to monitor internet connection using a spam port. So it's just to check those out link on the screen at the moment um, if you want a shortcut to it. So for the moment I'm just going to monitor my local traffic. So if you want to run a test, um, go to go to YouTube for example. And um, let's click at something. Jay Leno here with a Porsche 918. Lucky him. A serious looking machine. Although I'm not going to spend 24 minutes looking at it, so just pause for now. Um, go back here to the Langardian, so don't see any data yet on the dashboard, but you go to reports, let's go from the web reports, top websites, press view. So I see my YouTube in here starting to appear, drill down so I can see the um, fact that the client access YouTube and you know you get date and time when that was accessed. Um, there. So it's logging data almost straight away. So if you have a problem and you need to troubleshoot, just plug in, just leave it a couple of minutes, take a look at the dashboards and get to see what is happening on your network. When you do plug into the spam port, we recommend um, don't leave it in plugged in for too long. If, you, if it's got a current network problem, maybe 10, more, 10 minutes worth of data might be fine. Um, just if it's a really busy network, you don't want to overload your laptop with too much information. Now it won't overload your laptop, your, your virtual machine with 20 gigs of space, you don't want to fill it up too quick. So um, ideal if you just want to plug in for a short time, um, do your analysis. In a way it's a little portable troubleshooting tool. 